You want answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hoorah! Radical Rant. Well, if you've been following my show for any length of time, you know, one of the stories that always pisses me off is when I see the story of parents losing their kids because they happen to have pot or pot plants in the home. And before I get to the rant, I do want to make a scheduling note for people uh, having to do with a event that is taking place. Uh, The Facebook event has been put up by Moms for Marijuana. Uh, They are organizing a global protest on November 12th, I believe it is. And uh, this event, uh, I've put this up on my Facebook page as well, facebook.com slash Radical Russ, if you want to uh, uh, take a look for yourself. But uh, it's available through the Moms for Marijuana page as well. We'll be doing live coverage of that event. Plus, I am trying to put together an all-star panel of activists to have an hour-long discussion on this event, this uh this taking of children by Child Protective Services and and some of the horror stories of the family court system. It's it's nothing like civil court. It's nothing like criminal court. The rights you think that we all have as Americans don't seem to apply when you, once you get into the family court system. So that'll be on November 12th. Check my Facebook page, uh, Radical Russ on Facebook, for more information. Now, uh, as far as the rant goes today, the the story that prompted this uh, came out of NBC4I, and let me see if I know where that's at. That's in um, Ohio. Yeah, Hawking County, Ohio is where this story comes from. And the notes in the story basically tell us that a mother and her boyfriend are facing felony drug charges and endangering children after deputies found marijuana and marijuana plants in the mobile home where they lived with her children. Uh, They knocked on the door. They were greeted by the 23-year-old Jessica Lehman. Uh, She was holding her two-year-old daughter. She has two other kids as well who weren't there, uh, all under the age of five, I believe. Uh, But she had the two-year-old with her. The two others being babysat somewhere else. Now, Jessica told the deputies that there was some marijuana inside the residence, but not much. She granted permission for the deputies to search the mobile home. I I don't know how, how I can shout this louder than I shout it or say it more often than I say it. Never grant the cops permission to come in your home to search anything, especially if you know you've got marijuana and plants in the home. But I don't want to play, blame the victim here because a lot of people are intimidated by the cops. A lot of people don't know their rights. She's a young lady, 23 years old. Uh, According to the sheriff's office, deputy seized approximately 12.2 pounds of marijuana, three firearms, potting soil, a grow light, three large machetes, and a large quantity of ammunition. Uh, Layman, Jessica, she was uh, arrested, charged with possession of marijuana, three counts of endangering children, and one count of illegal cultivation. Her boyfriend uh, was later tracked down, and he provided a statement regarding his involvement in the situation. He also was charged with one count of possession, three counts of child endangerment, one count of illegal cultivation, and one count of trafficking. They were both transported to the Southeastern Ohio Regional Jail in Nelsonville. Now, as I read these stories, of course, I also go through the comments on the stories, and and I'm always interested in these stories when they're in the Midwest, in Ohio, or places where there's not as much marijuana uh, culture, maybe people aren't as informed about marijuana. And to see the reactions from the people uh, in these comment sections, you you were endangering your kid because everyone knows that uh, the marijuana dealers are dangerous and you're going to get, you know, uh, uh, home invasions. And and the thing that's so frustrating, of course, is that the, the tiny seed of truth in that is the seed of truth that prohibition leads to violence, not that pot plants lead to violence. And. The reason pot plants might lead to violence is that they are far more valuable than they should be. Nobody is doing home invasions over someone's home tomato plants, right? No one's doing home home invasions over someone's home brewing kit because anyone that wants beer can go buy beer and anyone that wants tomatoes can go buy tomatoes. If they want to brew or grow their own, they can as well. But with marijuana, 
we've got it so restricted that the price is so worth the profit and risk to go invade someone's home and rob them. But in that respect, marijuana is no different than diamonds or jewelry or any, you know, fine art or anything that might attract criminals who would then want uh, to, to take the risk of the home invasion and the robbery. So are we now to tell the, the, the rich women in, in, to not be driving their Bentleys and wearing the, the big rocks on their fingers and, and dressing in really expensive clothing, lest we you know, endanger their children? We wouldn't want people to know that, the, that their parents are rich. See, that kind of thinking kind of evaporates when you start applying it to people that we don't conceive of as poor, people that aren't living in trailer homes and, and perhaps paying the bills with some marijuana growing. And as far as that attraction to violence, attraction or the potential for the home invasion robbery, the only way in which the marijuana differs from the diamonds or the cash or the jewelry has to do with the fact that after you are robbed, after you are invaded, you can't call the cops. Someone who's got the, the, the diamonds, someone who's got the, the cash, you know, the valuables at home, the fine art, can get insurance policies so that they don't feel the need to have to defend their, their uh, property with violence or, or try to ha maintain a bunch of firearms. They know that, the, that they can call the cops if someone robs them. And they know they can fill out an insurance report and get their stuff back or get it replaced at some level. And that doesn't exist for the people growing pot. And so in every one of these stories, we get a situation where the cops find a bunch of pot plants. They find some parents, usually young parents with young kids. And bam, those kids are taken away immediately by Child Protective Services. The family courts can't get those kids quick enough when they find a pot plant. But if some kid gets a hold of a loaded gun in someone's house, oh, we, we rarely hear from CPS, do we? If you've been listening to my show for a while, you know I play some news games. And one of my news games is whenever I hear a story of some parent got their kid taken away for child endangerment for growing a pot plant, I do a news search on that county, on that state. And within the past six months, I guarantee you I can find a story where a child got a hold of a loaded gun thanks to the neglect, thanks to the endangerment presented by those parents being neglectful of proper firearm safety and storage, and a kid ends up shooting himself, shooting someone else, but you never hear of a child endangerment charge. You never hear of CPS coming and taking those kids away. As I reviewed this story in this Hocking County, Ohio, I found a story from Slate.com about the story of Rayton, Rayton, excuse me, got it, got the spelling weird, Raytron, Raytron Briggs, <laughs> sorry, I have trouble with the name, Raytron Briggs in Youngstown, Ohio, four-year-old boy who shot and killed himself while his one- and five-year-old siblings watched. There were three handguns found in the room where Raytron was shot. Now, this is uh, the seventh shooting accidental so-called accidental shooting of a child in the state of ohio since the newtown uh, massacre that took place and reawakened everyone to this this american uniquely american horror story seven accidental child shooting deaths and in the state of ohio there is no law to punish allowing children to get access to a loaded gun in some states, like, like Texas, Texas has this law that is a child access prevention law so that if you're irresponsible, if you're neglectful in the storage and handling of your firearms and a kid gets access to it and hurts himself or kills himself or kills someone else, you are held responsible for that. Now, this isn't a show about the gun debate or where you might stand on that issue, but I would think anyone with a shred of common sense in their head can see that loaded firearms in a home, and again, whether you think that you have a right to have them, that you should have them, that there should be limits, I don't care. Can we all agree that a loaded firearm in the home is more potential danger to a kid than a pot plant? That's what's so frustrating to me about this debate, this inconsistency of our national conscience 
on what is considered danger to children. We've got, and, and no doubt accidents happen. There's no doubt accidents happen, but we're talking about stories where uh, this was a four-year-old Kentucky boy. Another story, a four-year-old Kentucky boy shot and killed his six-year-old sister with their grandfather's pistol. The grandfather had been cleaning his pistol while the grandchildren looked on. Number one mistake. Hey, kids, why don't you just hang out while I'm cleaning my pistol? And then he set it down and stepped out of the room. I don't know, maybe he had to go take a whiz or something, right? Set it down. Don't worry, the four and the six-year-old, they wouldn't be curious at all as far as what grandpa was doing with the gun. Well, of course they were. The grandson grabbed the gun and pulled the trigger, killed his six-year-old sister. Was he charged with child endangerment? Was the child, were the children, the, the remaining child, was the remaining child taken away and put into child protective custody? No. It's too bad grandpa didn't have a pot plant in the closet. Maybe, uh, maybe he'd have faced some punishment. Two men, two women arrested for marijuana cultivation and child abuse out of NBC Los Angeles, age 22, 26, 24, 27. Conspiracy, marijuana cultivation for sales, child endangerment because kids were around pot plants. Here's one uh, out of uh, Kern County. Four children safe after two arrested in major pot bust. 29 and 31, their kids taken away, child endangerment, because they had marijuana plants on the premises. Folks, we are not ever going to get away from this demonization of marijuana use, marijuana users, and the misuse of child protective services until we can show that marijuana use is equal to beer use, that we deserve the same sort of respect, the same sort of laws. Certainly, some alcoholic parents may abuse their kids. And I'm sure it's entirely possible some marijuana-using parents aren't the greatest in the world either. But we don't take people's kids away just because they drink beer. We don't take people's kids away just because they homebrew. This misuse of Child Protective Services has got to stop. And in future episodes, you're going to learn even more about what a profit racket it is and how it's incentivized to break up families and incentivized to take kids away and put them in adoption. It's a sick, sick story. You're going to learn more about it in the coming weeks. Hey, that's all the time we got for today. Thanks for joining us. Remember, next week, Toker Talk Radio will take place after this hour. For now, free weed is next. And until next time, take care of each other, Tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it.